Right then. Um, so we've got some pretty interesting looking tank sets coming for next patch. Now, they're not going to be... I would say most of them won't be like meta gear sets. But you've definitely got some good... Some good gear sets that are potentially going to replace um, other sets that do a similar thing. Or like, if you're not into trials or you can't do trials, you don't have a team for trials, there's going to be a potential to do, to like get these gear sets instead as, as like a short-term solution for not having other sets. So one of the sets, for example, Yolnacrin. Now, Yolnacrin is not going to get replaced by one of the new sets. We've got the Waking Flame DLC, and one of the, one of the sets gives minor courage. Now... It's not going to replace Yolnacrin. However, it is going to be a good alternative if you can't do Sunspire. If you don't have a group or anything like that, you're going to have a chance to kind of go potentially get this gear option that's going to provide minor courage. Or you might be able to work it into some kind of um, tank build for dungeon content, four-man content, potentially. Waking Flame gear sets. We've got a couple of tank potential sets. Um, so we'll just have a quick look through the patch notes and have a look at the sets. We're going to look on the PTS in a minute and, and try them out, test them out, see how they do. Um, we've got, obviously, the first set is a light armor set. Kind of interesting because it's similar to Powerful Assault. Um, but I don't think you're going to wear it as a tank. Very unlikely. I guess... Well, it's not going to replace Powerful Assault because it doesn't have 100% uptime. PA has got a potential 100% uptime. So, like, if let's say you can afford to get Powerful Assault, then you could essentially use this as, like, a filler set in between, I think. We'll have to wait and see what it looks like when we get onto the PTS in a minute. So, when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you gain an imbued aura for 10 seconds, grant you and up to three group members, 307, Magicka, and Stamina Recovery. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds, so a 50% uptime. If you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, with an imbued aura active, so that's going to be two heavy attacks you've got to do to get this. You consume it and gain an overflow aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three other group members 307 weapon and spell damage. So, this is essentially the same as powerful assault, just not as good in terms of the uptime. So let's say you can't afford to get a powerful assault um, I staff because they're really expensive. Potentially, you could use this because it's going to do the same. The only problem is you're going to have to do two heavy attacks. Like, let's say you one bar this set, you just put it on your back bar with the staff, and you decide, I'm just going to back bar it. I'm going to use it in a similar way that I would PA, where I back bar it, I wear the jewelry, I wear the ice staff, I do a heavy attack. You're going to have to do two heavy attacks on your back bar with a staff to proc it. So, it's not ideal. So, it's definitely not a good replacement for PA. But it's an option if you can't get it, I suppose. Like, like worst case scenario, somebody tells you you've got to run PA, you can't run it. It's probably This is probably going to be somewhat easier. But at the same time, this is only really for four-man content. Like, this is four-man content. This is not going to be that useful in 12-person content because it's got a cooldown. It can only affect you and three group members. So it's just not as good as PA. But in terms of four-man content, you could potentially use it on the weapons and the jewellery. You could potentially give your group a 50% uptime of the same buff as PA with less effect like less effort in a way like even if you front barred the set if you think about it you do a one-handed um, heavy attack you're gonna give your group the same buff as PA but with half the effort you're not gonna have to use resources every 10 seconds to keep procking it so I don't know at the minute like I don't really we need to test it out but I think at the same time I don't think it's gonna re it's definitely not a replacement for PA but it's an option if you can't get PA if you absolutely couldn't get it you could use this instead okay Rush of Agony most of these sets have got kind of a tank aspect to them which I find really interesting so this this particular set medium armor set it gives stamina recovery weapon and spell damage pen uh, when you deal direct damage with a blink charge leap teleport or pull ability pull enemies within 10 meters to you so it's a chaining gear set. It's a five-piece gear set for chaining enemies. But it's a medium armor set with damage-based, offensive-based um, uh, two, three, and four pieces. This seems to me like a PvP set. I don't think you'd make any use out of this for a tank, um, even if you put it on the weapons and jewelry. Like, you could just chain and talons an enemy. You could just use the Vatishran 
One Hand and Shield, which is a two-piece set. This is a five-piece set just to chain enemies in, and it's only got a 10 meter radius, so it's not really that great, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I can see it being really useful in something like PvP, or, and I don't really know where else that'd potentially be good, but it's gonna chain enemies in, which I think is a bit crazy. Um, it also gives you like damage and things like that as well. So, and it doesn't, well, it doesn't apply crowd control immunity to the target. So when they do get pulled in, they're not CC immune. So then you can also chain them again. So you could like chain them and then chain them again. So with, with an actual chain skill or even probably like the Vatistran one hand and shield would chain them in again. So you could like keep chaining like enemies in. So I can see it being a bit of a troll set for PVP in a way. Um, Crimson Oath, heavy set. We've got armor, max health and armor. This is a tank orientated set, obviously, because it's got two sets of armor. The only problem is those two armor bonuses are probably very, very unnecessary. I think it's probably too much armor. So this, I mean, this is week one of the PTS, so this could change. But I feel like you're going to be over the armor cap with two armor bonuses. I think that's probably going to be a bit too much. Now, the important bit, the five piece, though. When you use an ability that applies a major or minor buff to yourself or an ally, send out a wave of energy that reduces the armor of nearby enemies within 12 meters by 3,541 for 15 seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. So this is your immediate replacement for Alkosh. So what I like about this straight away is the fact that this is a dungeon set. You haven't got to farm more of Lorcash to get a set to like for, for ad pulls, like, so for, for Magicka groups, this is a, not a good set, apart from in ad pulls, like we've been mentioning for quite a while now. There's been a bit of a trend with Alkosh over the last few years, where they've kept changing the set. It's been changed again on this patch. The pen has been increased to 6k pen with Alkosh now. Um, the benefit to this set is this is a 12 meter radius. So from, so you, like, you're the person in the middle, and then you've got, a, like, it's going to be, a, I imagine, a 360 degree AoE pen which is kind of good. Um, Alkosh is only a conal AoE, so it's Alkosh will only hit in front of you. So if you like, you won't be able to hit enemies behind you. With this, you can just stack all the enemies in and you can just proc it, easy. This has got a bigger radius than uh, Alkosh. So 12 meters is a much bigger radius than Alkosh. I think Alkosh works out at about 10 meters in front of you. So it's like a cone in front of you. And it's around, it, it really depends on the size of the hitbox of the enemy. So if the enemy's got a really big hitbox, you can hit them from further away. But I do, I do like this. I think this set's going to be a good one. For stamina groups, could be really good. Um, this effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. See, the wording, we need to test it. It's another set we've got to test because potentially it's saying if there's not an enemy within 12 meters, it's not going to proc... It's potentially not going to proc the armor reduction, and that's really clever if it does that, because then it makes it perfect. You can buff, you can pre-buff as you go into an ad pull, and then when there's an enemy within 12 meters, that's when the proc becomes available. So, I think that's kind of good. Um, we'll have to just wait and see. I think we'll test it out on the PTS again. It's another one we need to look at, but I think this is great. This is a good replacement for Alkosh. It's AOE instead of Codal. It's easier to get. It's got a higher value than Alkosh has currently. So for stamina groups, it's going to be somewhat useful. Um, definitely. The only thing is, Alkosh has been buffed. Again. For like... It's been changed for about seven or eight patches in a row now, I believe. So we'll have to just wait and see. Next one. Magma Incarnate Monster Set. Uh, we've got Stamina and Magic Recovery. Then we've got When You Heal Yourself or a Group Member with a single target heal ability, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters, minor courage and minor resolve, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215 and armor by 2974 for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Daedric energy will then bounce to a nearby group member up to three times, applying minor courage and minor resolve for 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So when I first saw it, I didn't really pay attention to the numbers, and I was like, wow, a minor courage set is going to replace Alkosh. We're going to replace a five-piece Alkosh set with a two-piece monster set. But obviously, you're not going to do that, because Alkosh is about a 2-3% DPS increase, but it's 100% uptime. 
that's from using the claw of Yolnaker instead. With this gear set, it's got a five second downtime, so you're not going to get 100% uptime, and it can only affect four people. Now, what I can kind of see potential for you to use it. So let's say you you like a tank, and you not you don't you go with a three DD group. Now, obviously Yolnakrin is not as strong as Powerful Assault or Olorin. So what you could end up seeing potentially, and also Minor Courage is a stronger buff than in Kratis. So I can see. A p the potential to have like a dungeon tank build where you're using magma with powerful assault and Olorin. I can see that as an option because you've obviously got that option now to run the minor courage on a monster set and you're gonna like I say you're gonna get a better you're gonna get better DPS from doing that than in Crytus and Crytus is only worth sort of 500 DPS to your average damage dealer can be up to 1k DPS, and it can push to 3k if it's a mag DK. So, uh, when you consider the fact that Minor Courage is 2-3% when it's at 100% uptime, you're looking at around, well if it's 3%, you're, probably, you're looking at about 2% DPS increase with the monster set. So I can see, I can see dungeon tank builds. If you're really comfortable tanking in medium armor with powerful assault body, all the rim, uh, weapons and jewelry, maybe a master's one hand and shield on the front bar, and then magma. I can really see that being an option. I, I, I wouldn't say that like if you can't get Yolnuk and you could use this instead because if you're capable of doing like vet dungeons, especially new vet dungeons, new vet dungeons are usually quite tricky. I think you'd probably be able to do normal Sunspire to get Yolnuk in. So I don't really think it's a good replacement for Yolnuk in just because you can't do a trial. I think that's... Because you can pick up a trial just by standing in Craglawn. Yeah, it might not be clean and tidy, it might not be completely pleasant, but you can easily farm Yolnukrin, um by joining trials. Or joining guilds. There's so many guilds out there that do normal trials, and they do lots of helping runs and things like that. There's loads of guilds. We've got a guild ourselves, the Serenity Academy, that does loads of trials. So there's guilds out there that do those kinds of things. So I don't think it's really good to say... Well, if you can't get Yolnukrin from Sunspire, then use this monster set, because you should really, realistically, be able to get yourself into normal Sunspire, I would say. Um, what else we got? So, yeah, this set, like I said, this monster set, I think, definitely an option for dungeon content. It's a four-person set, anyway. PA is a stronger buff than um, Minor Courage slash Yolnukrin, so, yeah, you could work this into a dungeon build, especially when you're doing it with no healer. Red Petal Bastion. I don't think this is going to be... This is a light armor light armor set, so dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack. Cause a bolt of lightning at your target, dealing shock damage, leaving a 4 meter lightning crater at their location for 6 seconds, dealing shock damage per second to enemies touching the crater. Not any use for tanks. Um, Grizzly Gourmet. Dealing light attack damage grants you a stack of Baker's Delight for 5 seconds. When you gain three stacks, you create a sweet roll next to you for five seconds. If you or an ally touches a sweet roll, both you and your ally gain one of the following effects. Restore health, magic, and stamina. Empower. Major force. This effect can occur once every two seconds. Um, I don't even know what to say. I think... I thought it was like a joke. This is something you'd expect to see as like an April Fool's joke. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't something you'd expect to actually see in the game, where you create a sweet roll, you stand on it and gain a buff. Like, that just seems a bit insane. Funny at the same time, though. Like, I think it sounds it sounds kind of funny. And it sounds kind of powerful. So it's something that can occur every two seconds, and you can give a 10-second empower, 10-second major force. You can restore a bunch of resources. Like... It sounds like it sounds really good, but I don't know where you'd where you'd manage to fit this into a into a setup. Like I don't know how on earth you would set this into any kind of cons. I don't know how or who or where you'd wear this, but it seems pretty strong. Um, like giving giving somebody in your group ten seconds of major force is just a bit insane. Empower ten seconds of empower seems a bit insane. Like it's a it's a huge buff, and you can keep giving but once every two seconds. 
So when you light attack weaving, dealing light attack damage grants you a stack of Baker's Delight for five seconds. When you gain three stacks, you create a sweet roll next to you, your target for five seconds. This is, it's too confusing because it's saying like five seconds, three stacks, five seconds, two seconds. Like, I don't understand how long we're going to, it's a set we're going to have to look at. Um, but can you imagine people kicking off because you stole a sweet roll? Like the, the old meme, the meme of people stealing a sweet roll is legitimately coming true because you, <laughs> you could be like, right, sweet roll on me. Stack on me for the sweet rolls, and then somebody comes over, takes it, like, well, someone stole my sweet roll. I don't know, it's it sounds mental. I don't really know. We're gonna test it out and see what it does. Silver rolls, heavy set. Right, he a heavy armor set. Let's have a look. So blocking an attack grants you a stack of Realm Shaper for 15 seconds, gaining up to one stack every 0.5 seconds. When you reach three stacks, you consume them and launch necrotic energy at your attacker, dealing magic damage and applying major maim for 12 seconds, reducing their damage done by 10%. Once you fire the necrotic energy, you cannot gain an additional stack of Realm Shaper for 12 seconds. The damage scales off max health. This is a damage-based tank set. So, I mean, the only place I could... We'll have to look at how this performs compared to the gear that we've got on the Tribute Tank build. So the damage-based solo tank build that I've got. Uh, we can try this out in that build and see how it works. But like, the Major Maim's not really that useful. We can now get Major Maim. So in these same patch notes, we can now get Major Maim by using Frost Clench. Frost Clench is 100% uptime of Major Maim. So if you taunt with um, Frost Clench, you could potentially just keep refreshing the Major Maim. Major Maim has become very easy to obtain now. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of not really critical. But it's a damage-based thing scaling off max health. So, I mean, for solo situations, it depends how easy it is to pick this up and how easy the dungeon is. If it's a difficult dungeon, then you're not going to want to pick it up because it's going to be too difficult to farm just for the sake of being able to get through like quests as a tank easier. But yeah, we'll, we'll test this out in a damage-based situation. We'll see how it performs on the Tribute Tank build and whether it's a good replacement for one of the other sets we've got on there. And if it does enough damage, like, it's scaling with max health, so it should be okay. But there's quite there's a few other things that scale with max health out there that don't really perform very well. So we'll have to just check it out. Uh, the Monster Mask. Weapon of Spell Damage. Dealing direct damage with an area of an effect ability creates a six meter shadowy whirlwind below you for seven second below your enemy for seven seconds. Enemies within the whirlwind take physical damage each each second and increase their damage taken from your area of effect abilities by five percent. I mean is that potentially some from your It'd be good if like that was a set that one person wore to buff a group because then that'd be like a good ad pull set for a stamina group. Do you know what I mean? Like if if you was in a stamina group, stamina have always typically people have disliked stamina in raids, for example, because of their lack of cleave damage or like it's not as strong as Magicka. Now, if this was a set you could wear on a tank, let's say you could put it on the off tank and they can proc it on a bunch of enemies and then you've got stamina DDs that are getting more AOE damage because it's been procced, then that'd be fine. But it says your area of effect abilities. So if it's only going to buff you, I don't think it's worth using. Do you know what I mean? I don't think I don't think it's going to be worth using just because it buffs your own AOEs. If it was buffing other people, then it actually would be a pretty good set, probably for a tank. But yeah, in that, in that kind of setup, I don't think it's really that much use. Um, so yeah, that's the new that's the new gear sets, guys. A lot of them seem somewhat useful for tanking in some capacity, which is interesting. Uh, we're gonna get on the PTS and test them out. It's ready to go. Fit timing. So the first gear set we're looking at, Crimson Oath. So as we looked at already, it's got armor one four eight seven armor. It's got max health one four eight seven armor again. 
When you use an ability that applies major or minor buff to yourself or an ally, sends out a wave of energy that reduces the armor of nearby enemies within 12 meters by 3,541 for 15 seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. So let's just have a look. So we're, so we're using it there. There we go. And then we can see it just there at the top. It's showing you the, the debuff. Which has got its own unique icon, which that's pretty cool. Oh. So a thing one thing that's good about this gear set is that like you can overlap the proc. So like it lasts for 15 seconds, or it doesn't appear to be. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm going out of combat. But you can overlap it. So there's four, three, two. So you can overlap it, so it never runs out. Um, so this is definitely a replacement for Alkosh, because the main thing for this, if you look at it, it's huge. The area is huge, 12 meters. But it's like AOE, 360 degrees around your character. Alkosh is a conal AoE, as we mentioned earlier. Um, so this is going to work really, really well. Because you can go into an ad pack. Let's say you pull in a bunch of ads. Range taunt, range taunt, range taunt. You stack there. You might have your Defiled Dragon or your Frozen Watcher on or something like that. And then you cast a buff. And it procs. And it only procs when you're near an enemy. So, like, when you're more than 12 meters away, it doesn't proc. So that means you can still pre-buff as you go into an ad pull. That's the main thing I was wanting to look at. So you don't waste the proc if you cast in balance here. It'll only proc when you're in range. So that's really important. Let's see what the radius looks like. Oh, it procs off a potion as well. So that, that procs then from here. Look how far away I am from that. And this is 360 degrees, the same distance. So if there was an enemy stood there, like over there, it's going to proc. That is insane. That is huge. That's an absolutely huge area. It procs from here, look. This is definitely replacing Alkosh. For two reasons. One, Number one, um, it's, like I say, 360 degrees. And it's a bigger debuff than what Alkosh currently is on the live server now. The area, that is a huge area. That is a circular-based AoE that's covering a massive, massive area. So currently, Alkosh could miss targets because it only targets in front of you. This isn't going to miss anything because it's, that is a massive range. Insane. And it procs a lot easier now because you don't have to rely on a synergy. You don't have to wait for a synergy off somebody. It's going to proc um, just by casting a major buff. So just drinking a potion or using balance or an armor buff or something like that. So really, really strong. Um, and the other thing is the fact that it drops in a dungeon. So... Typically, people have struggled for years and years and years, especially newer tanks, when they're told, Alkosh, you need Alkosh, it's an important set, a vital set, must have set, you've got to have it, right? But then you've got to find your way into a more of Lorcage um, raid, and you've got no chance of getting the Alkosh pieces in one run. Trying to get ice staves, trying to get sometimes resto staffs in the past and lightning staves, um, trying to get all the jewellery, all the body pieces have sometimes been used. It's been, it's been difficult. Um, and trying to get those drops is really, really hard. Especially when you don't do it on VET. It's even harder because you don't get the high enough quality on your drops to get the um, the staves and things like that. So it's been typically difficult for people to grab that Alkosh gear for years. Now you can just farm a dungeon and you can wear it on the body. It's a heavy set. It's a tank-based set. Alkosh has always been more damage orientated in a sense because it's got those... Uh, passives in there that are based around damage. This is based around tanking. So, absolutely insane. And yeah, like I say, it's it's higher than the Alkosh buff, so 3, 5, 4, 1 pen. Uh, currently, Alkosh is 3k pen. On the PTS, Alkosh is going up to 6k. So, Alkosh is, get, is getting improved a lot. But when you consider the range, the radius, the ease to farm this gear set, and all the other different factors, this is definitely replacing it because it's just far superior. This would also be better than Turugs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Turugs can only apply to one target. So you would use this instead. Of, if, you're, if you're somebody who's using Turugs packs for whatever reason, 
you might as well use this set instead because they're both five piece sets. Torugs can only be activated on one enemy because it's based on your enchant, your crusher enchant being buffed. Crusher enchant can only apply to one target, so you might as well use this. And the great thing about this set is you're fully in control of it. Alkosh, you, it relies on other people. Other people, like, control how good of an uptime you can have with Alkosh. Like, if somebody doesn't give you a synergy, your uptime's gone. If people use the synergies, your uptime is gone. This is dependent 100% on you. It doesn't rely on other people. So I think, fantastic set. Great for stamina groups. Great for ad pulls in Magicka groups. You're not going to need it on bosses still, as far as I'm aware. I don't think anything's really changed. Um, currently, I've seen some people are using Alkosh in Magicka groups, but it's not worth it, in my opinion, to do that. There's, there's far better sets to be using, but this is definitely going to be good for ad pulls and stamina groups, definitely. So really, really good set. Where's the chest plate? Mate, this is me wearing a chest plate. <laughs> this is me wearing armor. Wow, look at that armor, guys. You've always wanted to show some flesh. Now you can by not wearing a costume. Look at this. You put it on. Just full on exposure. How is that a chest piece? That's heavy armor. How is that a heavy armor say? It looks you can't call that heavy armor. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Just it covers nothing. It covers absolutely nothing. How does it work on a female character? Wouldn't you like to know? You dirty git. That is, well, it's not even like armor. It, you can't even call it armor. You cannot call that armor. <laughs> if you're a tank, you're wearing heavy armor. You went into battle wearing that. This is what you need to think about sometimes. I'd love to see some better shield designs and stuff. That's like a real giant looking shield that looks like something that's actually going to defend you against the enemies you're, you're killing. Because all the shields in ESO are like tiny little dinner plates. There's like other games that I've seen where they've got... They really... Make these really awesome looking shields, giant shields. And I think we need more of that. We definitely need some more bigger shields, you know. Because these tiny little dinner plates don't... I like I like a bit of realism. I know it's not real. I know it's just a game. I know it doesn't matter. But when I'm making my tank, I like it to look somewhat authentic. I like my tank to be massive, giant, butch. Looks like he could actually tank a dragon. I don't want a tank that looks like he'd get flicked and die. Do you know, like in that... If you were wearing the outfit and you went up to Yolnokrin, he's going to kill you. It, it, in reality, he'd kill you straight away because you're not you're not protected by any armor. He'd just breathe fire on you. You'd be dead, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? And your tiny little dinner plate shield and then your, 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 your bare chest. You'd just be dead with, like, just one little attack. The opposite of your tank. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Tanks should look big and butch. Nipples burnt off. Yeah, you, yeah exactly. Right, anyway, <laughs> it's me. Um, so the monster set, the Magma Incarnate monster set. So Magicka Recovery, kind of nice. Stamina Recovery, not really necessary, but oh well, not bad. It's a decent one piece, really, when you think about it. So let's say you, if you're somebody who's using um, like a one piece Blood Spawn and a one piece um, Shadow Rend or a one piece... Stormfist, like let's say you're doing the Locusties fight in your, uh, in Sunspire and you're going for that Stam Recovery. Well, this would be quite good. This would be a good One Piece because you get Stam and Mag Recovery. So I quite like this One Piece for certain situations where Stam Recovery is useful. So when you heal yourself or a group member with a single target heal ability, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters minor courage and minor resolve, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215 and armor by 2,974 for 10 seconds. Daedric energy will then bounce to nearby group members within 8 meters, up to 3 times, applying minor courage and minor resolve for 10 seconds. Effect can occur once every 15 seconds, so a low up time. It's got a low up time, it's not great. Um, it, it, it procs on one person 28 meters away from you, but then the other people need to be within 8 meters of that person. So, 
it could be quite difficult if you're in a situation where people are spread out. I can't see how that it wouldn't work very well. Oh, there we go. No, you've actually got to not. Ha you've got to be missing health. Minor courage. There we go. So you've got to be missing health for it to proc. It won't proc at people on full health. So you've actually got to heal yourself or somebody else um, that is on low health. Now, if let's say you were to use this on yourself, this gear set. So here we go. When you use it, you see the little glow, the fire, the magma. The big problem you've got is the fact that when you heal yourself, so you could use it with a self-heal, heal yourself, proc it. It's then going to bounce to other people. But the problem is, if you look at this bit, group members within 8 meters. 8 meters is a tiny, tiny radius. 8 meters is probably about this distance from me to that enemy there. So, like, for Magic Adidas in dungeon content, are they going to be that close? Maybe. It could easily miss them, though, because it's got to bounce between people within 8 meters of each other. So I can see this resulting in some pretty poor uptimes depending on the level your group plays at. I do think it's an option, maybe, for people who want to run PA on the body and they want to run Olorim. They're not running a healer. They want to get the Minor Courage still because Minor Courage is still a decent amount of DPS increase. Um, and you're able to get Minor Courage, Minor Courage and PA all on one character. That's kind of important. That's going to be a lot of spell damage and weapon damage. That's going to be quite a lot of DPS. So I can see the use for this in four-man content. It's definitely not going to be used in Trials. So this is not a replacement for the Claw of Yolnikrin set. And it's definitely not worth using if you're not comfortable tanking in medium armor. So the only way you could work this into a dungeon-based build is if you're going to run Powerful Assault Body Pieces. That's a medium set. If you're not comfortable running medium, obviously you're not going to run this. You're just going to run the Claw of Yolnikrin set because it's what, it is the best set in the game. It still is the easiest set to maintain. This is not going to replace it. But I do think it does give you options and makes things a bit more versatile in terms of when you become a tank. If you want to switch for different fights and you want to be more offensive, you want to play with PA, Olo, and Magma, you can. And then if, like, in a more hard-hitting fight, you switch, and then you'd maybe run with Encratis and something else, like Yolnikrin and Olorim, or PA. Do you know what I mean? There's different ways to work it around, I think. So it definitely gives you more options. It definitely makes things a bit more interesting. It definitely means you can customise more four-man content fights. So typically, four-man... Uh, content is done with a pretty set build like you have a build and that's what you keep for the entire time I think this kind of gives you more options where you could potentially have a couple of different setups depending on the fight where you can work this in and then in other situations you might use something else and you can switch de depending on if it's a low damage fight or a high damage fight or whatever and you can run with higher buffs for your group or higher defense for yourself um, so I think it's gonna have a minor use potentially for four-man content so like I said before, so we've got this, the next set is the new, the next new monster set, the prior monster set. Now, this isn't, this isn't a tank monster set. It could have been, um, if you look at it. So dealing direct damage with an area of an effect ability creates a six meter shadowy whirlwind below your enemy for seven seconds. Enemies within the whirlwind take three, three, five physical damage each second. Increase their damage taken from your area of effect abilities by 5%. If this would have said, um, like that it increases the damage that enemies take by 5% and didn't have the word your area of effect damage, this would have been a tank monster set for stamina groups, definitely. Um, well, potentially for, well, potentially for stamina and magic groups. Like if this would have been a buff set, as in a group buff set rather than an individual buff, this would have been quite good. Do you know what I mean? In a magic or stamina group, at the minute, the off tank is kind of... In hard-hitting content, you usually have Kratis on the main tank. You'll have a um, a Lady Thorn on the off tank, let's say, for like your Rock Groves and your kind, kind Aegis adds that are really hard-hitting. For like some stuff, you could have ran this for the 5% increased damage if it would have been a group buff set, but it's not. So it's definitely not going to be used by tanks uh, because it's a solo buff, not a group buff. So yeah, I mean, potentially a missed opportunity to have another good group buff set. 5% more AoE damage would be nice if you could offer that for the group. Not a huge amount of DPS. It would have probably... I mean, that would have probably been somewhere similar to um, in Kratis. Maybe a little bit stronger than in Kratis. But not too overpowered if it was a group buff set. I mean, maybe if you're a tank main and you want a gear set that you can switch to 
that's heavy armor. It's going to do damage um, for like questing, overland content. Maybe you could use this because it's it it sounds like ta tank orientated, but also damage based as well. So you've got some max stamina, some max health, some max stamina. Block an attack. Blocking an attack grants you a stack of realm shape of 15 seconds, granting you up to one stack every 0.5 seconds. When you reach three stacks, you consume them and launch necrotic energy at your attacker. Dealing magic damage. Applying major main for 12 seconds, reducing their damage done by 10%. Once you fire the necrotic energy, you cannot gain additional stacks of realm shape for 12 seconds. Damage scales off max health. Now, it seems like a really, really long cooldown, though. I don't know if... That's going to really be that useful. I can see the idea they've gone for, though. I can I can understand it. They're going for a heavy armor set, four tanks, that's going to help you do a bit of damage for that solo content. I'm not going to be able to block an attack here, but... You're obviously going to need to push your max health quite high to benefit from it, and I just don't think it's going to be worth it, because you're going to... You're going to give up a lot to do it. Is it a good major maim set for VK? No. Because, what about... The fact that you can just apply this now. If you look at this, destructive touch. Frost clench costs less, deals less damage, applies major maim, immobilizes and taunts the enemy. You're just going to use that, aren't you? You're not going to use a five-piece gear set that does damage and causes major maim when you've got a skill where you can get 100% uptime on major maim. Do you know what I mean? You can just major maim 100% with that. Okay, so that gear set, not really... Not really that excited about it. Okay, so the next set is the one that's like kind of powerful assault, but not as good. So you're not going to use this on the body pieces as a tank because it is a light armor set. However, it's got some nice bonuses for a tank because we've got max magicka and magicka recovery. The weapon and spell damage not that useful, but it's kind of all right. Um, five piece when you deal damage. With a fully charged heavy attack, you gain imbued aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three group members 307 magicka and stamina recovery. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds. If you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack with an imbued aura active, consume it and gain an overflow aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three group members 307 weapon and spell damage. That's the same as PA. So it's not got an uptime as good as PA. PA has got 100% uptime potential. This has got a 50% uptime potential. PA costs millions of gold, or you've got to get Telvar to get it, so it's more difficult to obtain. This is a dungeon-based set. So in the meantime, while you're trying to get PA, this could be a useful set. So let's see how it works. So you've got a heavy attack. So you do a heavy attack. Oh, okay. So people stood inside this ring then are going to get the Oh, look at that. So now people stood inside this are going to be buffed up. It's going to be very obvious. The thing I like, though, so let's say you can't afford the 2 million gold to get a PA Ice Staff. You can't afford the Telvar to get a PA Ice Staff. You could use this as, like, an option to start with so that you're able to perform whatever you need to do in your group. And obviously, the way to maximize it is going to be, you do a heavy attack. This lasts for 10 seconds. When there's like two seconds left, so you want to benefit from the recovery, hit it. It's actually proc the same. It is PA. Look at the screen now. It's the same buff as PA. Can you see the little um, icon above my health bar? That's the powerful assault buff. So it's the same buff. It's the powerful assault buff. It's the exact same thing. So this probably means that you can't stack PA and this up. Potentially, so it's not going to be. Let's have a look. It doesn't look like you're going to be able to stack PA with this set, even though they're two unique named, uh, they're unnamed buffs. Let's have a look. So the good news is Powerful Assault has been buffed um, or fixed. Depends how you look at it. So now, Powerful Assault on, on, the PC, on the patch notes said that it's been fixed in terms of it will now apply to people who don't already have the buff. So this means in one big piled stack of people, you apply PA, you, you do an assault ability twice, you should be able to get it onto your full group. So that's a nice change. PA is fixed. Hopefully that works. We need to find, we, we can't test it though, because we don't have a group. We need people on the PTS to test it with. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, I'd, I'd need at least six people to make sure I could test it. Can we prop both at the same time? So here we go. Heavy attack. Get the PA buff. They stack. So it stacks with PA. You can So if you can see the icons on the screen, they are the PA icons. And they both stack. So you can have both at the same time. PA will refresh on people that are missing the buff. So you can just heavy attack twice. You don't If you don't want to give you guys, your, your team, the resources, just heavy attack twice straight off the bat. But there you go. There's the two PA icons on the buff bar at the bottom above the health bar. So yeah, they do stack. So they are both um, unique buffs to your spell and weapon damage. Now the problem with this in terms of a raid situation, it seems kind of strong, but it will only apply to four people. So obviously this isn't going to be used in a raid because it says granting you and up to three other group members 307 when you consume it, you and up to three group members, unless it's bugged and applies to more than three people, it's not really going to be much use in a raid situation. It could potentially be used in a more beginner level team. Um, especially for like healers that aren't comfortable running certain gear sets, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, definitely interesting for four-man content because it will stack with PA. And I do think if you are struggling to get PA, then this is definitely going to be an option to use it in the meantime. Um, because it's it's very easy to up, like keep upkeep. Like when you're trying to keep down... When you're trying to keep down a skill, like let's say you're using Calchops, you're going to have to spend stamina constantly to keep up your PA uptime or vigor or whatever. By using the other set, it just requires a heavy attack. Now as a tank, yeah, heavy attacking is a bit risky because you you've got to time your heavy attack for when you're not taking damage. But I do think it's, it's definitely a, an option for like something to use in the meantime. So we've got the Grizzly Gourmet Boots with the Grizzly Gourmet set. Max Stam, weapon and spell damage. Pen, max Stam. That's 526 max Stam. Why so? Oh, because it's a double bonus, I can see. Dealing light attack damage grants you a stack of Baker's Delight. When you get to three stacks, you create a sweet roll. Okay. Oh, God. Ah, oh, you can't. So it's trying to create them, but because we've we've, we've not reached the uptime yet. Oh, Are we bugging this out or something? It's trying to proc, but it can't because... Can you see it's trying to proc? But because of the uptime of the set. <laughs> I mean, it seems like... It seems like a bit of a meme, but... It does kind of seem... I don't know, it's weird because it's... I don't, I don't know how you'd ever fit this into anything. It's only a, It only gives a buff to you and one other person. So it's only for two people. But the fact it's like 10 seconds of empower, 10 seconds of major force, or resources back, is kind of nice. I don't really know. Maybe, like, if I didn't have to run for it, I'd have probably procced it more. Um, so, like, 80% empower, 60% major force... I mean, it's a funny set, isn't it? But 3k DPS best set, exactly. It's like that insane, like, if I didn't have to run around the room chasing after the sweet rolls, then it wouldn't be so bad. But like, the fact that you've got really high in power, really, like, 60% major force without casting a single skill. I mean, it's pretty, pretty crazy, really. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I mean, that's the that's the sweet roll set, guys. What can I say? Well, that's all the gear sets, guys. That is all the new um, gear sets for 
next patch, Waking Flame DLC. Uh, this is week one PTS, so potentially things will change. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll kind of keep you updated and we'll do some more testing of these gear sets um, in the future, like PTS things. Uh, tomorrow we're going to look at the new champion points and stuff. We're going to do some testing with the new CPs and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be back on the PTS tomorrow. <laughs>